How often do I make impulse purchases? I would say maybe once per month, I would say. It happens every day. <laughs> I'm very good about researching my purchases. The way I feel after making the impulse purchase. I'll first question if I regret it or not, but usually I'm satisfied if I made that decision it's for a reason. I feel guilty and then I wish I return it all back. It's easier than ever to spend money. The average American has $38,000 in debt, a quarter of which comes directly from credit card charges. In December 2018, consumer debt hit an overall record high of $4 trillion. Experts say a significant amount of this debt can be explained by what they call money disorders. Dr. Brad Klontz, author of Mind Over Money and co-founder of the Financial Psychology Institute, says that money disorders is an umbrella term for reoccurring and self-defeating issues that people have with money. The average American, you could argue, has a money disorder. So many of us are struggling in our relationship with money. And then the, in the extreme, you have individuals who are engaging in very self-destructive financial behaviors. They, they know better, but they can't seem to do better. And it's having a significant impact on their, their mental health, their financial health, their relationships, their ability to you know, perform their work functions. According to Dr. Klontz, Money disorders are often the result of underlying psychological issues like anxiety, depression, or trauma. He finds that most disorders fall into three broad categories. Money avoidance disorders, money worshiping disorders, and relational money disorders. Well, money avoidant disorders at, at their core involve some sort of anxiety and not wanting to think about money. So there's a whole host of behaviors that people engage in to avoid dealing with money. One is, for example, financial denial, where we don't want to look at our statements, we don't want to think about money, we don't want to talk about money, and those money avoidant disorders lead to financial catastrophe. Another category is relational money disorders, and these are ones that involve relationships with other people. So for example, financial infidelity is a really common one actually in our country. Quite often it, it's the result of trying to hide spending behaviors, perhaps because you feel bad about them. Money worshiping disorders are ones in which we've really equated money with meeting some sort of emotional need. So whether it's giving us a sense of happiness, a sense of connection, and this can result in disorders like compulsive buying disorder where we're trying to fill an emotional hole. Each category can be broken into more specific disorders like overspending, workaholism, and pathological gambling. And not all money disorders have to do with spending. Being an obsessive saver may also indicate a bigger problem. Money hoarder is somebody who typically has such anxiety about not having enough. Very often these people grew up in poor households or, or even a life of poverty as a child, and they have this belief they'll never be enough money. And so they're able to amass amount of money and wealth in the bank, but they can never sort of switch gears into allowing themselves to enjoy those resources. Dr. April Benson is a psychologist who specializes in the treatment of compulsive buying disorder and says that technology might be partly to blame for rising cases of money disorders. I think that e-commerce is definitely contributing to higher levels of compulsive buying disorder and other money disorders. I think we know that compulsive buying disorder is on the rise. Internet shopping has been a big factor in that. People who didn't shop, wouldn't shop, and preferred other ways of dealing with their anxieties and upsets. Now with the anonymity and the choice of internet shopping, men have been flocking to the internet at a rate faster than women in certain countries, buying more than women, and even in such traditionally female categories as health and beauty products. For individuals who are prone to overspending, it's a huge issue. And then for those who have a compulsive buying disorder, it's like basically living in a liquor store. A 2019 study showed that nearly three-fourths of consumers go straight to Amazon when they are getting ready to buy a product. Money disorders aren't a new concept. Gambling disorder is recognized as a psychiatric disorder in the Diagnostic and Statistic Manual of Mental Disorders. Hoarding is also recognized in the DSM. I think money disorders really have 
come to the forefront of attention in the United States after the Great Recession in 2008. A lot of people were struggling in their relationship with money, had a lot of stress, anxiety, depression. Much like traditional mental health issues, the consequences of money disorders can be devastating and often go beyond the wallet. Credit card bills have been left alongside suicide notes in, student, in college students. It can lead to incarceration when the need for the stuff becomes so intense that somebody is willing to steal. They can be quite serious. Klontz and April both say money disorders are treatable, but it requires that people think about their behaviors and feelings toward money. I think for many people, just having an awareness that um, our behaviors around money are very much driven by our beliefs around money and investigating where those came from. For, for many people, it comes from like an experience your grandparents had that you never heard about. Dr. April Benson says that breaking your bad habits can be as simple as asking yourself six questions before every purchase. I think it's also necessary to learn something about how the behavior is being used, you know, why you're over shopping. What they need to do is ask themselves six questions before they make a purchase. Why am I here? How do I feel? Do I need this? What if I wait? How will I pay for it? Where will I put it? Both agree that if you're having trouble understanding your relationship with money, you should seek out help from financial and medical professionals. Invest in you. Ready, set, grow. CNBC and Acorns.